All right, uh, thank you, Lou, for that very kind introduction, and it's, uh, it's a real honor to be here um, at this symposium and just to uh, be part of this just wonderful explosion of uh, data generation and data analysis um, that has been uh, uh, TCGA over the last uh, several years and, and really coming to more and more uh, fruition this year. Uh, so I'm going to be talking on behalf uh, first of uh, uh, my co-chairs, uh, Ramaswamy Govindan and Steve Balin, uh, both of whom are also here at this meeting. Uh, and, um, and I'm trying to get to the next slide here. Uh, let's try that. There we go. On behalf of um, all of our colleagues uh, in the Cancer Genome Atlas Lung Cancer Analysis Working Group, um, uh, many of the prominent members of whom uh, are named here um, on this slide uh, uh, in, uh, in front of us, and I'll, I'll be uh, thanking various people individually uh, go, as we go through the presentation. Um, I think, as all of you are very familiar with, uh, lung cancer accounts for over 25% of cancer deaths uh, in the United States uh, each year um, and is the leading cause of cancer death uh, both in men and in women uh, in the United States. Um, in total, um, lung cancer kills uh, more than uh, 150,000 Americans each year um, and more than one million people uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, the major lung cancer histologies, um, as again, I think probably most of you are very familiar with, are adenocarcinoma of the lung, uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, uh, and small cell lung carcinoma. Uh, we now have projects in each of these areas uh, as part of a TCGA. Uh, and um, as uh, most of you know, we've recently um, uh, published the uh, first squamous cell lung carcinoma marker paper uh, from TCGA uh, in Nature earlier this fall. Uh, among these cases, uh, lung adenocarcinoma accounts for on the order of 40% of lung cancer diagnoses uh, within the United States uh, and about 65,000 deaths uh, per year in the United States. And um, the percentage may be even a little bit higher uh, worldwide. And so the number of deaths per year from lung adenocarcinoma probably is over 500,000. And while lung cancer is generally associated with smoking, uh, really lung adenocarcinoma, uniquely among uh, lung cancer uh, histologies, uh, does often occur in non-smokers. And uh, lung adenocarcinoma of non-smokers is especially prevalent in women, uh, in younger patients, uh, and in patients uh, from East Asia or of East Asian origin. Lung adenocarcinoma has really become a paradigm uh, for molecular subtyping, as in recent years the treatments for lung adenocarcinoma uh, have shifted from histology-based strategies uh, to molecular-based strategies. And <clears throat> we've really made major advances in treatment for lung adenocarcinoma with targeted inhibitors of uh, both EGFR, uh, such as gefitinib or orlotinib, and ALK, uh, such as crizotinib, uh, thanks to genomic discoveries. Uh, with the um, uh, my group fortunate to be able to participate, uh, Bill Sellers, uh, Bruce Johnson, and I, uh, in the discovery of EGFR mutations uh, in uh, 2004, along with the Pow and Varmus group and the groups of uh, Tom Lynch and Daniel Haber. And this is uh, shown here as just one example, a patient with lung adenocarcinoma uh, with a uh, somatic uh, EGFR deletion mutant uh, in exon 19. Uh, and you can see here multiple nodules in the right side of the lung in this transverse CT section, uh, and then uh, complete clearing of these nodules after two months of erlotinib treatment. A slide from our, our colleague Bruce Johnson at uh, uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. There have been a number of uh, previous comprehensive genomic studies uh, of uh, uh, lung adenocarcinoma, and I just mentioned a few of these here. Um, a copy number study uh, by uh, uh, Weir and colleagues, and a, um, a mutational study by uh, Lee Ding and Gaddy Getz and colleagues, uh, both part of this, the tumor sequencing project uh, spearheaded by the NHGRI as a, a kind of precursor uh, to TCGA, identifying amplifications of genes such as uh, NKX2-1 and TERT and mutations of NF1, ATM, and uh, APC, among others. Uh, the Director's Challenge Expression, NCI Director's Challenge Expression Classification Project, 
uh, and uh, recent reports uh, by uh, Ramaswamy Govindan and colleagues with Rick Wilson at Washington University on whole genome sequencing, uh, identifying smoking and non-smoking signatures, and then work of uh, Martin Himalinsky, Alice Berger and colleagues uh, working together with my group at uh, Dana-Farber and the Broad. Uh, both whole exome and whole genome sequencing, identifying recurrent mutations in RNA splicing genes, including RBM10 and U2F1. And then finally, a recent report from uh, Jong Sun So's group in uh, Seoul National University, identifying uh, transcriptome alterations, including recurrent MET splicing alterations. So this has led to the definition of a large number of potential therapeutic targets, uh, and, this, and this is a paper from, uh, uh, adapted from a paper by Pau and Hutchinson uh, showing uh, KRAS mutations, uh, EGFR alterations, ALK fusions, and uh, a number of other alterations, ERB2 mutations, and most recently the identification of ROS1 fusions and the KIF5B RET fusion uh, reported by numerous groups earlier this year. But it also says to us that the leading driver in uh, many lung adenocarcinomas remains unknown uh, and still uh, remains to be uncovered, and this is one of the major goals of our TCGA effort. Uh, if we look at our current project status, uh, there were, um, there actually, we've actually reached a full accrual of the estimated 500 cases uh, to the BCR, uh, but there were 303 samples for which there were uh, comprehensive uh, molecular data at the time of our data freeze, October 2nd, um, but really working very closely with Bill Travis at MSKCC, who led histological confirmation, we excluded many samples due to pathology review, and we're left with 230 samples uh, for the lung adenocarcinoma data freeze. Uh, and the remaining cases that were excluded as not being adenocarcinoma will nevertheless be uh, uh, included in a subsequent uh, pan non-small cell lung cancer study uh, from TCGA that will also include cases uh, initially reported as squamous cell lung carcinoma and excluded. So we have high quality data across multiple set platforms for all of these samples, including uh, DNA sequencing, RNA sequencing, um, SNP array-based copy number, methylation array data, uh, proteomic analysis, and fusion discovered by low-pass sequencing and RNA sequencing. Uh, we expect to have 38 sample pairs with whole genome sequencing data, uh, which I won't be discussing today. Uh, our first face-to-face uh, -face meeting is tomorrow, uh, and our goal is to prepare data for a manuscript submission uh, sometime early next year. Uh, first, I want to speak about copy number analysis of lung adenocarcinoma, uh, led by Andy Cherniak and Gaddy Yetz uh, as part of the Broad Institute Genome Characterization Centers. So I just want to point out, first of all, you can see overall here red is copy number gain, uh, blue is copy number loss, and white is neutralish. Uh, samples in this dimension, uh, chromosomal position in this dimension. You can see many overall similarities between uh, lung squamous uh, carcinomas and lung adenocarcinomas. Um, gain of chromosome arm 1Q, gain of 7, loss of 8P, gain of 8Q, loss of 9, etc. Probably the most striking difference is that Chromosome arm 3Q is almost never gained in lung adenocarcinoma and is frequently gained in squamous cell lung carcinomas. If we look at focal alterations, uh, first I'll speak about the deletions. The uh, predominant uh, focal uh, uh, homozygous deletion in uh, lung adenocarcinoma uh, is the CDKN2A, uh, uh, cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor gene locus. Um, and if we look at focal amplifications, uh, these include a number of cyclin-dependent kinases, uh, cyclin-D1 and cyclin-D3, as well as the uh, cyclin-dependent kinase gene CDK4 itself. Uh, it includes uh, telomerase genes, uh, the uh, catalytic and uh, uh, subunit TERT and the RNA subunit TERK. Uh, it includes receptor tyrosine kinase genes, uh, EGFR, MAT, uh, ERB2, signal transduction downstream KRAS, and the NKX2-1 lineage-specific uh, transcription factor, uh, and finally, uh, the MYC transcription factor. Uh, if we look at exome and, trans uh, and RNA sequencing analysis, uh, led by uh, uh, Julianne Chmielecki, Mara Rosenberg working at uh, Dana-Farber and Broad, uh, Matt Wilkerson at UNC, uh, Marcin and Malinsky, uh, Brian Hernandez, Michael, uh, Mike Lawrence, Neil Hayes, and Gaddy Yetz, 
uh, we see first, um, this is the uh, uh, famous slide that uh, Gaddy and Mike Lawrence frequently show, um, showing, this is a variant showing uh, the variance in mutation frequency, so different types of cancer across this dimension, uh, mutation frequency on a log scale uh, in this dimension here, and you can see the highest mutation rate tumors are the carcinogen-induced tumors, melanomas, squamous cell lung carcinomas, and lung adenocarcinomas. Uh, this very high somatic mutation rate uh, poses a major problem in identifying significantly mutated genes. And we heard from Petar Stoyanov at the Broad yesterday about approaches to uh, really um, identify significantly mutated genes and overcome these challenges. And, a, uh, and similarly, we heard today uh, from uh, Nikolai, Nikolai Kankanov from um, Compendia uh, uh, about uh, other approaches for this. So just some issues that we see, first of all, um, known recurrently mutated genes, uh, such as ERB2 or, or beta-catenin, uh, do not show up as significant in this data set, at least to date, regardless of the method that we've used. Um, we see a lot of spurious uh, mutated genes, genes like olfactory receptors. This can be eliminated by a number of uh, signal-to-noise analyses as well as expression filtering. But I think we'll still need to consider a variety of alternative approaches, including inclusion of functional significance analysis and two-stage statistical analyses. Uh, furthermore, in the end, a much larger sample size uh, may be required for elucidation of the full population of lung adenocarcinoma causative mutation. This is a list of the uh, top 21 mutated genes uh, in lung adenocarcinoma, expression filtered, uh, generated by uh, Julian Chmielecki and, and Mara Rosenberg and their colleagues. And just want to point out at the top a number of known genes, most of these uh, present previously in the, the uh, Ding and Getz manuscript, Ding Getz et al. manuscript, P53, STK11, KRAS, uh, EGFR, RB1, BRAF. So again, recurrent drivers. From that pie chart, KRAS, EGFR, and BRAF are all here. Uh, others identified uh, by other more recent papers, such as the Emolinsky et al. paper, RBM10, uh, ARID1A, and, and UTF2F1. Um, and, but I want to highlight here with STARS uh, some of the candidate novel genes and just point out a couple of these here. BCL9L is homologous to the BCL, uh, B-cell lymphoma translocated gene, BCL9, and is reported to encode a protein in interacting with beta-catenin, uh, also frequently mutated in lung and other cancers. MGA encodes a reported suppressor of the MYC pathway, and this gene has recently been reported to be subjected to inactivating mutations in B-cell leukemias and lymphomas. And MKI67IP interacts a pro encodes a protein that interacts with uh, key 67 the well-known uh, uh, histological proliferation marker, which is encoded by MKI67, uh, which has been found in the TCGA study to be recurrently mutated in endometrial cancer. And this is just a, a kind of diagram of, of correlation of gene mutations, just a couple features that, uh, that jump out here. First of all, uh, EGFR mutations frequently, uh, insertion deletion mutations shown in yellow here, frequently in samples with low overall mutation rates. Uh, P53 in lung adenocarcinoma, as in both, as in squamous cell lung carcinoma, as in small cell lung carcinoma, the most frequently mutated gene. Um, and uh, the uh, other um, point that I want to make on this slide, though it's a little bit difficult to see here, uh, is mutual exclusion between mu uh, mutations in KRAS, uh, EGFR, and uh, BRAF. Uh, we also see recurrent um, uh, loss of function mutations in SWI-SNF complex chromatin remodeling genes, uh, most notably ARID1A and SMARC-A4. Uh, SMARC-A4 originally reported to be mutated in lung adenocarcinoma uh, by uh, Monse Sanchez Suspedes uh, from uh, Barcelona. Uh, Expression-based classification of lung adenocarcinoma, uh, really some uh, very elegant work done by Matt Wilk Wilkerson and Neil Hayes at the University of North Carolina. Um, they did um, expression clustering, uh, showing reproducible classes, the bronchioid, magnoid, and squamoid classes, and using a subtype predictor uh, based on their previous study of over 1,000 uh, lung adenocarcinoma expression profiles. Uh, they identified these same subtypes uh, in the TCEGA uh, data set, uh, and then went on to perform integrated analyses. And you can see that the, the bronchioid subtype uh, are most enriched for uh, those uh, patients who are non-smokers. Um, they are uh, most enriched for uh, EGFR mutation, uh, as well as ALK, RAT, uh, and ROS fusions, 
uh, which are also occasionally seen in the uh, uh, squamoid subtype. Um, in addition, you can see the SMARC-A4 mutations are, uh, and KEEP-1 mutations are both enriched in the uh, uh, magnoid subtypes. Um, Low-pass whole genome sequencing analysis uh, from Raju Kuchulapati's group uh, at uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School, uh, work led by uh, Angela Hajipanayas. Uh, and uh, uh, cooperation with uh, Matt Wilkerson and Neil Hayes at UNC, and I should also mention here in fusion analysis, uh, Xiaoping Su uh, at the MD Anderson uh, uh, Cancer Center. Uh, first, uh, from RNA sequencing, uh, able to identify uh, known fusions, ALK, ROS1, and RET fusions in about 4% of cases, as I mentioned predominantly in the uh, bronchioid subtype. Uh, one of the more intriguing novel fusions uh, identified by Angela Hodgepanias analysis is a fusion uh, between VMP1 and the uh, ribosomal protein S6 kinase subunit, uh, RPS6B1, um, in uh, uh, several percent of cases, uh, and uh, these fusions uh, generally preserve the, uh, the bulk of the uh, catalytic domain of uh, the uh, protein kinase uh, and, and are potentially activating. Uh, in addition, there's some intriguing peptidase fusions as well uh, that also bear uh, further, uh, uh, further exploration. I uh, want to briefly touch on DNA methylation analysis, uh, led by uh, Leslie Cope, uh, Ludmila Danilova, uh, and Steve Balin, at, and Jim Herman uh, at Johns Hopkins. Uh, and I think one of the uh, findings to date, we saw CDKN2A, uh, and this is similar again to squamous cell lung carcinoma, CDKN2A, uh, one of the most frequently inactivated genes by mutation, one of the most frequently inactivated by copy number alteration, and by methylation. So we see again multiple means of inactivation of CDKN2A. Uh, work of Gordon Robertson and Andy Chu and colleagues at the British Columbia uh, Cancer Agency uh, has identified uh, microRNA uh, signatures, um, which uh, in particular uh, expression of um, MIR-21 uh, defines a large subset of, of lung adenocarcinoma. Uh, finally, um, a group led by Alice Berger, uh, Eric Collison, who's really uh, uh, been playing a major role uh, in, in the entire project, uh, William Lee and Mark Ladani, has uh, examined mutations in those tumors that lack receptor tyrosine kinase and downstream signaling events. RAS mutations, EGFR, ERB2, and BRAF mutations, and the ALK, RAT, and ROS1 fusions. And what they found by looking at genes mutated in the oncogene positive group, uh, uniquely enriched in the oncogene positive group so far was RBM10. Uniquely enriched in the oncogene negative group, interestingly, uh, was NF1, suggesting that NF1 loss of function potentially uh, could substitute for uh, the uh, receptor tyrosine kinase pathway signaling oncogene gain of function. And I think this is the first analysis that's really been powered sufficiently uh, and has comprehensive enough data uh, to address this question. Finally, in terms of integrative cross-platform analysis, I'm just going to show one slide out of many, uh, work of a number of people, including uh, Chad Creighton, Eric Collison, Ron Bowes, Nikki Schultz, Ted Goldstein, and Stan, uh, Sam Ng. Um, just want to point out the uh, significant, uh, you know, well-known, but and I apologize a little bit for the fuzziness of this slide, a significant deregulation of multiple genes in the uh, RTK, RAS, RAF, and PI3 kinase pathways, um, including, in addition to the genes that we've shown, mutations of MET uh, and of, of, of Sybil. Um, uh, finally, uh, Gordon Mills, Lauren Byers, and uh, Alicia Diao have been doing a reverse phase protein array analysis, uh, which has given uh, groups that will be able to, to compare with uh, the uh, mutational analysis, but in particular groups with a very strong signature of uh, receptor tyrosine kinase activity, uh, um, MAP kinase uh, pathway activity, and, and DNA repair pathway activity. So just conclusions thus far, uh, both lung adenocarcinoma and squamous cell lung carcinoma have very similar copy number profiles. There's a very high mutation rate, which makes it a real challenge to identify novel candidate mutated genes, including MGA. Uh, three distinct expression subtypes identified from RNA sequencing data with interesting mutational correlations. Multiple fusions, including a number of novel fusions expressed in lung adenocarcinoma. Uh, multiple mechanisms for a CDKN2A inactivation. Uh, distinct microRNA and proteomic clusters that we will be working to integrate uh, with the expression and, and as, as well as mutational and copy number based 
base clusters. And finally, mutational differences between the oncogene negative and oncogene positive subtypes, including the enrichment of NF1 mutation in the oncogene negative group. Uh, there's an enormous number of people uh, to really thank for um, their work uh, in this project. I want to just want to call out a few people. Um, again, my co-chairs, uh, Ramaswamy Govindan and Steve Balin, uh, Angela Hajapanayas doing the, the fusion analysis, uh, Juliana, Julianne Chmielecki, who's led the um, uh, exome sequence analysis, Carrie Sunier, who's put together the, uh, the data freeze, uh, Neil Hayes and Matt Wilkerson leading the RNA sequencing analysis, and spectacular contributions from Bill Travis on uh, the uh, histopathology side. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Questions for Matt? <clears throat> yeah, there's been a lot, number of groups interested in the possible ER positivity of some subsets of, of lung adenoid. Is there any signal to, of this in the TCGA data set? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, there's evidence from Jill Siegfried's group and others of a, a role for ER signaling in, in lung adenocarcinoma. Uh, we haven't asked that question, but we have our face-to-face -face meeting tomorrow, and we will uh, put that on our, our list of, of, of topics to uh, examine in the RNA sequencing data. I had a question, Matt. So the expression subgroups, do they uh, indicate anything about different types of lung cells that they may have come from? Are these embryonic signatures? What do they look like? Um, Lou, I think that's a great question. The, um, uh, the bronchioid uh, subgroup, I think, has a lot of expression features of uh, alveolar type 2 pneumocytes um, and are, you know, likely to, to represent um, uh, growth from, uh, from that lineage. Um, I, I think I would turn to uh, Matt Wilkerson for comments on the other subtypes if, if he uh, wants to add anything. So if, uh, if, if he does, he can come forward. I have a quick question. So in your previous paper, you reported the difference in mutation spectrum between smokers and non-smokers. Uh, I wonder if you also see a difference in uh, expression signature or expression subtype for smokers. Uh, I think that's a great question as well. We're still um, roughly, uh, and I don't have the numbers at the tip of my fingers, roughly 15% of these cases are from never smokers. Um, we're just starting to do analysis between the never smokers and, and the smokers, and I think uh, you know, expression differences as well as mutational differences will be important to look at. Just a follow-up question. So do you see any difference between smokers and non-smokers regarding fusions? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, regarding mutations? Fusions. Regarding fusions. Right. Um, the well-known recurrent fusions, the ALK, RAT, and ROS1 fusions, uh, generally arise in, in uh, tumors from non-smokers, uh, but we haven't systematically queried the incidence of fusions between the two subtypes, uh, between the two populations. So.